We're going climbing today. First up on our order of operations, we need to climb to the top of the leg up here. There's a distributor that picks where the corn goes from the leg. And we need it to go over to that hopper bottom bin because they got the dryer hooked up and we're gonna be able to dry some corn today and we need a hopper bottom for our wet storage. Dad's turning the little handle thing down below that's gonna affect these cables. And these cables turn up in this distributor and they pick which hole it's gonna go into. So we need to go in number one, which is that one. Okay, east leg would go to number two. This is the leg that comes from the pit. So it's gonna go to the number one slot. That's going right to the hopper bottom. So that's gonna be our wet corn storage. And then it'll go from wet corn storage. It'll go up that auger, get fed into the dryer. The dryer will dry it. It'll get kicked down that conveyor. And then that conveyor will bring it over to this other leg. This is our smaller leg. And then this one is dumping in the number two slot, which is right here and then that'll take it into this conveyor and it'll take it over to the big bends where we can blow air on it, cool it down, and that'll be its final storage place before it gets loaded up on a truck and shipped out. Good to see Carlos so Kelly's is having a three for one here for all these birds, my goodness. That is a lot of white diarrhea. Hey Justin, Justin, let's see a backflip. It should sound like a thunderstorm. Yeah. Just go a little bit at first. We got 15% corn in here. We're gonna run this through the dryer first just to get everything working. So we're just gonna run a little bit in through the pit. We've never put corn over in that hopper bottom before. So this is gonna be a first time experience. And if it's anything else like our first 20 experiences with all this other stuff, this could be interesting. Owen, Cooper, and me, we're going down in the, actually what is called a pit pit. Burnt the belts off last night, so we got two new ones. So I'm gonna go back down in that dungeon and change them quick. Ready to try it? Not ready. Yep, ready. And if everything runs good, we can let it empty out and then I'll tighten it. That hold it down. They didn't put any grooves in it. So if that motor is just off tweak a little bit, you cannot align that motor if you wanted to. Before we had a seven horse motor down here, it kept blowing the tripper because it was not big enough motor to run it. So now we put a 10 horse on it. The 10 horse is too strong. So when that auger starts binding up, it burns the belts off. So I'm almost tempted to put the little seven horse back on so at least the thing would trip and not be burning out belts. Hey Maverick, what do you got, bud? What do you got? Almost looks like a giant turd. <laughs> I'm not gonna take it from him. We did have a couple great guys stop by the other day. Fix the sumps in our bin set up. They had a good chunk of the floor out. They got it all back together. Found a few issues on the bottom too when they got this tore apart. They got that taken apart and fit. It's funny how you can walk 80 feet in a straight line and you're not wore out. You go up here, long ways. I gotta check out the bin, see how full it is. They gotta get over to the stairs there. Pretty good drop from there to there, but let's try it guys without. You gotta always be real careful in cases like this too. I'm way up here. Railings are way down there. You can see how far we are off the ground. You don't want to slip from here. Just some, we want to be very careful of. Ugh. Okay, let's take a look at it. Probably wasn't very bright of me to turn the fan on when I'm gonna open the door. Oh, she is filling up nice. I think we probably got room for another 20,000 bushels. Hey, Cooper, Maverick, highway down there. Just want to be real careful here. You get green dust and everything on it. No! It's kind of scary when you look back behind you and stuff. Let's get back up here. Check the belts and stuff quick. Mm. 
Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <sighs> right there, right there. Well, just broke. I don't even know if I'm safe up here anymore. Well, I think we better just get down for the day. Good morning, everybody. Well, actually, it's afternoon now. This morning was one of those mornings. A Gorlin came out. We just sat back and visited and didn't worry about anything else in the world. It was really refreshing. And now it's back to getting stuff done on the farm. I'm getting a call right now. Combine's full, grain carts are full, and all the semis. They're waiting for me. Very delicate, don't bang mirrors. Jody's running the John Deere today. I'm in the Freightliner, or the gray Freightliner, I should say, because Elmer is also a Freightliner. This is Bill's farm, so remember when we're at Bill's farm, we always think of Bill. Whether it's him getting lost in the back, or him calling you and saying, I can't find my phone, I don't know where it's at. We kind of call it an underdog farm because it's a little bit rolly for the area, but it just always seems to produce really well. The corn behind me on top of the hill, this is the east end of the farm. This is our non-program acre stuff. This did not have any fungicide on it. It's testing about 15% moisture right now. So we're just throwing these right into the bin site. Bin site is right on the other side of those trees. Actually, it's two miles straight west of here. So nice and easy, quick to get there. But then the stuff we have on the west end of the field, that's where the mile long rows start. With the corn that's standing over there. It goes all the way to Kristen and Rusty's on the other end. That is program acres and that's running at about 20%. So once we get done with this, all the acres we have left are program acres, which is perfect timing. Update on the new John Deere combine that's coming out. They said they'd have it out here this morning. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I haven't heard anything yet. So it's got to be about here. Is this milkweed? I think it is. That feels like cotton. Like identical to cotton. I'm probably going to be planting a bunch of seeds when I let this go. Here. What is, put it right in here. These non-program acres did not get any fungicide on them, and we had... Quite the tar spot infestation. Look at that. It's all over these leaves. It definitely contributed to this corn being 15% now and our program acre stuff that got the double fungicide on it being 20% because this died significantly sooner. That was still green the other day up until we got a frost where this has been dead for like two and a half weeks. If that translates into yield, I don't know yet. We're gonna find out here in a little bit, but there's got to be something behind it going on there because two and a half weeks of a plant being alive longer, that's two and a half weeks it has access to resources that the stuff that died early didn't, like rain. Yield is captured in three different ways. The number of ears that we have in an acre, and then the number of individual kernels that we have in an acre. And then the final one is the weight of those individual kernels. So the more ears we have per acre, the more yield we have. The more kernels we have per ear, the more yield we have. And then the more those kernels per ear weigh, the more yield we have. The number of kernels and the weight of the kernels is heavily influenced by that thing. And that stuff. I'm pointing to the blue moisture water. Uh, we gotta take this truck now, Maverick. We're gonna take this one. On the road again. Hands down, my favorite thing in this semi when I was a kid was rolling up the window with that air. Listen, listen. That is the most satisfying sound in the world. One. Okay, West Conveyor. That is totally how you spell conveyor. Conroyon. Convoyon. Now, who wrote this? Number one goes to the 18,000 bushel bin, number two goes to the conveyor. So it's on number two or is it number one? Because he wrote both. That's number one. I'm going that's number two. That's how fusion con happens. Sorry, confusion. Another one bites the dust. Oh, I left my turn signal on.
Keeping the flow of carts going pretty good today. You pull in with an empty one just as they're getting the other one full. We're keeping three trucks moving. It looks like Maverick had his way with his Terraform cup. I went through the link below and I got 15% off of my Pit Viper shades. They just came out with a new style here. I have really sensitive eyes, so I'd recommend the polarized ones because those relieve the eye the most, in my opinion. I mean, my eyes are so sensitive even when I wear sunglasses, no matter how dark, like these ones, these are really dark. I mean, just looking through them. I still squint, but these do a good job and they have a lot of coverage, which is what I need. That's why I wear the big ones. Hey, Jody. Just remember the trailer's not straight, so it's angled towards you, so you'll have to turn right when you go forward so you don't hit the trailer. Hey, Gary. I'm just making sure you didn't flip in the ditch and get stuck. Who am I talking to? This is Cole. Oh, <laughs> no, we had, we had some issues. Uh, we're on our way right now. I'm actually driving on the blacktop and the, the uh, combine's coming up the gravel road from the south. Okay, perfect. So we, should be there. we should be there in 20 minutes or so. It seems like every time you go to a specific field, there's a certain pattern associated with that field. Like there's always a breakdown in this field. You always lose all the hydraulic oil in your reservoir in a certain field. It's always super windy in a field or raining. Well, Bill's farm, always a beautiful sunset. Just like that. Year after year, never fails. What do they call this, golden hour? Photo shoot. Not as good as they used to be. Kinda wonder if they broke down or something in the back of the field, or maybe they're in a tight area, I don't know, but I've been here like 15 minutes and I haven't got a load yet. Well, I haven't got a load since Jody was full when I got here. That's not normal. Usually you're pumping a load out about every 15 minutes. I think that was my old high school maintenance guy. Oh my goodness, look. <laughs> that sunset. That's incredible. Transformer. We got a 780 now. This is a class 8 machine. All of our settings and stuff got changed. Now we got to do the old check and see what's going on behind the machine. We're obliterating those cobs. Since we keep burning belts off our middle auger in the pit, it's going to slow things down, but Joe is trying to get away, figure it out. So when we fill the pit up with corn, it must be pulling hard and it just keeps burning. 60 to $80 a pop on belts. He's trying to figure out a way to set it. So the pit will empty out what it will in the middle of the hole. And then when the less pressure comes on the pit auger down in the bottom of the pit, then it will kick in, so a run in, run the less it can, so we don't keep going through belts. He had a good thought. He goes, I wonder if the guy that built it has stocks in belts. <laughs> Based off some of the settings I'm finding on here, I think this machine was running in soybeans last, so there's quite a few things that need to be changed. Some stuff was already changed, but I think a few things forgot. I was going along, I tried to set my rotor speed at 280, which is what I had it before when we had the 790 and then it turned itself back up to 400. So I think we're in second gear on the gearbox. So I think we need to go down one, or maybe we're in third and we need to go to second. So Gary climbed out there, he's messing with that right now. And then we'll make a little cut across the field here. We'll hop out again, we'll check, see what kind of sample we're getting. I can't really see in the grain tank that well. My window's all dirty, that's not, not good. But I think we're, we're getting a fair amount of cracked grain, but once we get that rotor speed thing figured out, that's what's causing our cracked grain. And then we'll be able to kind of refine some details. And I need to redo my whole screen here now because I don't have my old pages that I had in the other combine. That's kind of a bummer. We'll get, we can figure it out. It just you know, takes 10 minutes that I could have been sleeping. Same corn head though. They just popped it off. So we got the devastators on here. Nothing changed about the corn head. Just we're in a 780 now instead of a 790. Oh, yeah. I 
think that was the problem. We were just stuck in second gear, we put it in first. Notice how the help comes after you get it done. <laughs> yeah. We've been running into this issue on our corn head and certain hybrids. It's like, it's so light and dry that it does not settle into the corn head and then it just starts bridging across. It's not plugged and it's not packed in there tight. It's literally just sitting there, but it prevents new corn from coming in. You just knock it over. It's really annoying. We don't know why it's doing it. Every neighbor we have seems to be having it. And certain hybrids do it more than others. So far, so good with Cooper in this field. But this deer head now is fighting us. That doesn't look too bad, actually, Gary. That doesn't look too bad. I like the two by four extension on the front to keep cab corn off. Hey, pretzel. Hey, Cole. How did you plant this field? No. Okay. I'm confused here because I keep getting off. I don't know what's going on, but I was hoping you had planted it so you could tell me what you did. But. Uh, well, we're about to the end here on this little spot, but I think he just went straight through those waterways down there. Ron redid them. So they're, they're kind of bumpy because we didn't get to smooth them out with the disc in time. Okay, I'm right up here in front of you. Um, he told me to come over here, but I just keep getting off a row, so I didn't know if he did like 24 rows around this edge here or what. But I'll, I'm gonna come this way once and see. That's kind of cool, not gonna lie. Now I'm in the little brother, or at least according to the numbers on the side, but actually this is probably still technically a bigger combine than ours. Six years does a lot in the difference of combine technology. I'll tell you one thing, this is going to get real old real quick if this keeps this up. So I've made it across the field one time, and it's done it twice. It's not packed in there hard at all, it's literally just laying right across. We're going to try speeding up our header a little bit. Why is that thing beeping at me? It keeps going beep beep. Beep, 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 beep. I don't know what it is. Okay, that seems to be helping. At least temporarily. It's building up right there, though. Oh, it's building up again in the center. Oh, no. I have a theory. I think air is blowing from the fan forward, and it's keeping that pushed up and setting it letting go in. So I'm going to make sure that the back of the sieve is open enough, but not close too much. I don't know what to do. I literally go 50 feet after unplugging it, and it does it again. I tried speeding up my feeder house, sped up my head, opened up the deck plate, slowed down, sped up. I cleaned her off more than a thousand maggots on a dead raccoon on the side of the road, and now we're just running three mile an hour, and we turned our head speed up a little bit. That seems to be doing a better job. all plugged up on his head. I got a weird noise, Cole. Can you come over here and see if you can tell what it is? I was coming down the hill and it just started. You can check that trap door too, Cole. Okay, it's not bad. You can, I just feel like I can hear something like dragging. That one does drag a little bit, probably. Okay, well, I'm going to get out and check it just to be safe. I like the 2x4 idea for the fact that it doesn't get the top of your cab dirty. What I don't like about it is normally it runs over the front on top of your cab first before the sides start going. And then that's kind of like your psh warning of, hey, you're full. But now, since that's there, then it gets really full. Then it starts going over the side. And if it doesn't hit the side of the combine, then you don't hear it. So if you're not looking in your mirror or not looking at your full gauge, then you don't realize you're dumping it on the ground. Should I do it? <laughs> it happened again on the last pass. I had 12 rows left, so I just ended up doing it down back down with the outside four. We got her done. Well, we'll take care of that in the morning. Oh, hey, Rick. Hey, Liz. Oh, hi. 